Chief, first of all, thanks for coming in today and being with us here uh, to discuss uh, some of the things that we've been talking about and that you've even given interviews on uh, yourself. But the first thing I would ask you is, in your comments previously and that we've seen, you seem to think that, or it seems to be your belief that you disagree that it's a deficit or that the amount um, or just really the status of it. Can you explain why you think that? Yeah, I need to do a little correction here. I, you're actually my first interview, uh -huh. my very first interview on this on this whole thing. I did uh, do a, a submission of, of uh, some statements mm -hmm. that uh, uh, was used and uh, I appreciate Muskogee Media for allowing me this time to be able to to react to some of the things. Um, I think to some degree there's been some sensationalism uh, in the, the uh, uh, theme, if you will, of you know whatever's going on with health. Uh, there hasn't been a deficit. Uh, we didn't know of a deficit when we left. There wasn't any deficit in terms of what the process or uh, what um, uh, you know we knew uh, in terms of what was going on with health. You know, we did a lot of new innovative ideas that uh, were implemented. And, um, you know, if there was a deficit, certainly uh, I and the members of the National Council would have known about it way back when. Uh, there was a lot of things that we did that was, uh, I think, uh, uh, pioneering in terms of who we are as Muscogee Creek Nation, how we address the, the health issues that uh, our citizens, when I came in, I, prior to me coming in, I commissioned a survey to see what their concerns and issues were and health was number one. So I made a commitment to them, to the citizens that we serve, we were going to improve health, whether it meant uh, allowing for quality, more quality health care to be done or having more resources available to them. Uh, that was the emphasis of, of addressing the health needs that our citizens were wanting to have addressed. Considering that, you know, you don't believe there is a deficit do you have documents to show that everything's fine and, or was fine when you left? Well, number one is I think still yet there are some people, employees that are jockeying themselves for positions to make sure they keep their positions and maybe providing some things that, uh, you know, uh, we really needs to be studied. And I wish that the council would do that and not just go on what was presented to them. Uh, you know, we, uh, we feel like that uh, when we left uh, the nation, uh, we left it in good financial stability. Uh, it was consistent with uh, the growth that we had uh, during my administration. Uh, the stability in the finance part of it is pretty uh, well documented uh, in terms of uh, our growth with the, with the permanent, so-called permanent fund. Uh, you know, and uh, there were periods of time prior to me coming in that there were some deficits. Uh, we addressed those issues and and turn some of those things around, as an example. How did you guys address them? Well, we, we addressed them because, number one, uh, for instance, there was a little bit of corruption that had gone on before. Uh, you know, there was uh, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. So immediately we addressed that and said, well, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, you know, there, there were some uh, issues in terms of uh, how uh, procurement was being done, uh, those kinds of things that we addressed. And, and again, we didn't, we didn't point fingers. We just said, you know, this is about Creek Nation. We addressed them and got them taken care of. We requested and received audits from fiscal year 2013 and 14. Mm -hmm. um, out of those audits, uh, I want to read something qu quoted in them. It said, business type activities reported a decrease in net position of 8.7 million. Uh, this decrease is attributable to the Department of Health's operating expenses exceeding its operating revenues of, uh, by 65.2, the federal grants and contracts offsetting 48.7 million of that. Uh, that essentially leaves us with a, a deficit of 16.5, if you, you know, roughly. Right, instead there. of 65 million. Right, yeah. And so, but what are your thoughts there? Because as principal chief or the council, you guys would ha have to see an audit that you ordered for the nation, mm -hmm. right? Well, it's ordered every year. You're right. It's, it's just a natural thing that you do. But did you not see that 16.5 deficit in there? Well, the one thing that you have to remember is uh, we uh, basically improved a lot of facets of what was going on in, in health. So we had to spend money. Mm -hmm. uh, certification for our clinics, certification for some of the things that were, were going on. Uh, you know, some of the things that, that we presented to the council and they addressed, you know, we all believed that it needed to be done mm -hmm. together as right. a executive and legislative. Uh, any reports that we get, whether it's uh, 
the administration or the executive branch office, the council gets it too. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, if either of us, either of us felt at that time that we saw that, that it was, it was something that was of grave concern, certainly we, it would have been addressed. Right. Now, fiscal year 2013 didn't show a deficit or didn't show anything, but, but then how do we explain, where, do you think you could pinpoint maybe the reason that there was one that yes. came up? Yeah. Okay. I think, again, to improve the quality of health care for citizens, number one, when we came in as administration, mm -hmm. we didn't have providers, we didn't have nurses, uh, our uh, salary uh, scales were lower. We couldn't compete. We couldn't keep uh, good health professionals. Uh, when we came in, we found out that there were some monies available to be able to provide raises for our nurses and to raise the level for uh, getting good uh, providers to provide the health care that was needed. Uh, we did increase some salaries. Uh, there were some other things that we had to do to be able to recruit and to, for lack of a better term, entice people, our own citizens, by the way, that wanted to come home, there were some things that we provided to them, relocations, uh, you know, uh, uh, expenses and those things. That's what, that's a standard practice in the, in, in the medical field, in the corporate world. Because the one thing that we said was, you know, we're going to have to, to operate our, our uh, tribe as a corporate because basically that's what we are. We just happen to be a tribal government. But we always fell back on, on the fact that as a tribal government, we can provide resources uh, as any uh, working viable government does, you know, just like the U.S. government, in mm -hmm. health service facilities, veterans administration facilities, you know, do they make money? I can't answer that. You know, do they have deficit? I can't answer that. But I do know that whenever you're trying to improve the quality of health care for citizens, that you do have to spend some money. And again, that money was spent uh, after I was authorized and it was approved by the National Council. You said before that uh, the Department of Health was writing off three million a month uh, due to uh, lack of effort to recover. Mm -hmm. um, How did you know that and what was the plan there to fix that? Well, number one, uh, let me preface uh, saying this before I answer sure, that. Sure. I am in contact with former Secretary of Health uh, uh, Seneca Smith. Mm -hmm. Now I know that there's been attempts to contact him to make uh, you know, some statements regarding some of these things. Now that he is a federal employee, he can't do that. So I basically ask him, you know, what are some of the things that, that we feel like we need to address? And that was one of the things that we both agree that, you know, maybe we need to take a, a more of an aggressive approach in, in addressing the shortfalls, you know. We, there, when we came in, uh, we were very low on the amount of money that we were able to recoup, for lack of a better term. There was a, a very aggressive process that, in the way that we addressed it to, to where in this, in this year, in this fiscal year, we actually, in the last fiscal year, made a commitment to try to get anywhere from five to eight million dollars more coming in a month in health care to recoup some of those things. And Chief, the big, the big question is that we've all, you know, is the, the council says we didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people, you yourself included, said we didn't know anything about it. Um, you have said that the council was indeed aware. Now, do you, do you still believe that or, I mean? Well, you know, they have uh, some standing committees. Those standing committees have responsibility and oversight of the various areas of our tribal government. Mm -hmm. um, you have uh, health education, welfare, that's over the health programs. Um, you know, they're provided uh, information on everything that, that, that is done. All programs provide that to the council. Uh, I will say this, being a former speaker, so one of my pet peeves as a speaker was there were times that a lot of my colleagues didn't read what was in front of them. Mm -hmm. And I used to jokingly say, I'm going to quit printing things out because you guys don't read them. You think that's what happened here? I don't know. I can't answer that, right. you know, because each session has a little different makeup. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that, um, you know, we, uh, we, when I say we should, we, we should have known about it, or didn't know about it. Either way, you know, those reports are provided to us. We have quarterly meetings, quarterly session meetings, where all those things are, are reported at that time. So, and again, the other thing too is, you know, the National Council has their own financial person who also gets reports, financials, uh, every month, uh, you know, in-house that they could easily ask for. So, you know, 
rather than point fingers and blaming or saying we didn't know this or we did did know this or whatever, you know, uh, we've overcame a lot of things as Muscoa Creek people, and I know that we'll overcome this as well. One of the things brought up too in the discussion has been the types of loans and how they play out and everything like that. And a big thing has been balloon payments. You know, that's been a hot, hot topic. Uh, and that's another thing that I'm surprised that people on the council are, are questioning because every big project this nation has ever done, whether it's in gaming or, or other things, there's always been a standard practice of having balloon payments. Right. And that, that, you know, that's something that, you know, uh, is, is standard. Uh, we did that when we first built River Spirit. Uh, we've we've done that with this current project that's going on, uh, you know, and and um, you know, I, I I'm surprised that it's surprising, you know, some of my former colleagues. The loan to recoup and kind of get us back uh, that they've done that they've brought mm -hmm. forth, uh, it doesn't contain a balloon payment, and it's uh, actually a lower interest rate. Mm -hmm. Can you explain maybe, and is that an instance where that's not regular tribal business or? What would, what would be the explanation there? That they well, I, I'm not a financial money. person, so okay. it would be, be hard for me to explain. Mm -hmm. I do know that, uh, uh, you know, it is a standard practice that we've done in the past. Uh, what, what, you know, if they were able to negotiate something, uh, you know, fine, right. you know. Yeah. What about the Margaritaville loan? I mean, what are your, anything you can share with us on the details about that, how you feel about the loan, no. well, its particulars? I, uh, I, all I know is this, that, that uh, we got probably one of the best gaming industry syndicated loans in the country on that project. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it does have a balloon payment on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, before I could even sign a contract on it, it went before the council and they approved it. Now you look at, um, you know, everything that you've said as far as dealing with the council on the purchases. A lot of people have said, well, why, are we, why were we purchasing expanding while there was a deficit. Talk about the process that goes in with the purchases, you know, the, the two health facilities mm -hmm. and then existing health facilities. Mm -hmm. What was, you know, what goes into that process for people that not, don't know how this nation works and sure. what a principal chief is to do mm -hmm. to give all the information to the council when you bring stuff up like this? Well, number one, on, on any purchase, um, I'll, I'll start with uh, uh, the purchase of the Otmogi Memorial Hospital. There was an red cent that came out of the coffers of the Muscogee Creek Nation. We assumed their debt. You know, uh, there's uh, you know all kinds of rumors going on that the medical center in Otmogi was making money before we took it over. If they were making money, uh, they wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't have it. They would still have it. The Otmogi Hospital Authority uh, Board would still be uh, you know operating that. Uh, we came to the council, but before we did, we did our homework. The senior management of, of health. Uh, those uh, members have a, uh, you know, a lot of knowledge about uh, you know, health. Uh, they went in, uh, did some feasibility studies, uh, came back and, and you know, everything was presented to the council. Uh, you know, we're not having to pay, we're having to assume. By the way, that, that assumption of that uh, uh, purchase, uh, you know, it was, uh, 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 I think, within an 18 month, million, uh, 18 month period that uh, that uh, particular uh, uh, financial situation was uh, retired. Uh, you know, again, uh, we just didn't arbitrarily, and 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 we we didn't uh, on anything that we did and purchases or whatever, uh, do it without the con uh, consent of the National Council. The George Nye Rehab Center, uh, formerly George Nye Rehab Center, uh, we heard that uh, you know that there was a possibility the University of Oklahoma was wanting to get out from underneath it because of of um, uh, location in terms of providers that, that were working there and there's some other things that uh, they were having a concern with. Um, so we approached uh, President Bourne at University of Oklahoma that we may have an interest. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, as you know, you were there for the signing of, of, of that whole thing. Is that one of the statements that? Uh, President Bourne made was that they weren't going to turn it over to just anybody. They'd done their homework on us too. And that they saw that the advancements and the progress in the health areas that they felt like that they were leaving in good hands. That that facility was purchased for one million dollars and that money came from the investment funds that the, the health division had. So it again, it didn't come out of coffers. So we did also, uh, again, approach the nation or the National Council to get their uh, advice and consent to authorize that uh, 
to, to happen, and that's what happened. Knowing what you did about sometimes that we don't get as much as we need from IHS, mm -hmm. there are you know shortcomings because we don't get the funding that's uh, required. Yeah. Um, and then you talk about the, the issues that we had with collections, collecting. W did any of that come into your mind to say, um, maybe let's pump the brakes on expansion a little bit because we've got these two things? Or did you think that those were issues that we could overcome? No, I think that any time you're, you're seeking to improve the quality of health care, you do whatever you can to move forward progressively and positively. One of the things we looked at was in, in doing is to increase the number of people that were in collection and in the billing process. We even thought at some point in time, because there's other entities in the health industry that has the same issues that we were having and being able to collect, that we would also uh, look at having a separate entity their whole thing was going to be uh, collections and billing for not only us at Muskogee Creek Nation and our health facility, facilities, but other health entities as well. That meant more jobs for our, for our uh, uh, tribal members to be able to do that. Again, that was one of the goals that we had uh, in mind. Uh, we, have, we did have record number of years during my administration in collections of uh, you know, those, uh, those things. Uh, you know, we increased it uh, uh, quite enormously on a per month basis. The council had a planning session where the health board was present to speak to some of these claims. Um, from the audio, it um, basically, the health board was relaying a lack of uh, transparency with management, meaning Seneca. You know, they didn't get, weren't getting everything they needed from Seneca. Um, do you believe this was true or uh, were you aware of this at any time? Did any health board members come to you and say, well, look, we, we need to do our jobs. Just, we're not getting everything we need. Yeah, just a correction. The nation doesn't have a health board. It does have a senior management that, right. that uh, okay. the council met with. Right. Uh, I think that there were a couple of comments in, in that particular thing where uh, there was even words like bullying tactics and things like that that may have been said, but, uh, you know, I think that any time you're going to progress, you have to have good numbers, mm -hmm. and that comes from the finance department of the, you know, at, in this particular case, from the health department. Uh, I know that in the past, whenever we needed some information, uh, the late uh, James Pratt would always come to me and say, you know, I, I, I'm not getting the information I'm needing mm -hmm. as quickly or as expediently as I would like to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, again, uh, it could be uh, the, um, uh, system that we have too but uh, I don't know of no one's ever came to me uh, at any time to say that there's no transparency in, in the health administration uh, I do think that uh, there may have been some miscommunications uh, again sometimes it's how the question is asked and I think in this particular uh, instance it was how the question was asked okay uh, I think if the question would have been or could have been conveyed is, you know, is there some transparency issues that may be, you know, forthcoming uh, instead of point blank, just again, pointing fingers at someone. You know, we don't, we don't, uh, as Muskogee people, we've never succeeded in pointing fingers at someone. We've been able to uh, work together and get these things worked out. You see it at the ceremonial grounds. If they have an issue, they call everybody in. Let's get together and sit around a circle and get it done. They do that at our traditional churches as well. And I think, you know, those are some of the things that we really need to get back to. You said the, not a health board, what was that again? A health? Was, uh, like the senior management. Okay, senior management. Is that, has it always been like that in our health system? Or no, we, uh, did you guys bring that in? Uh, Your administration, I mean. Did you bring well, that was, in? Okay. It was, uh, in place? It was in place. How does, how are they selected though? I mean, does well, each chief select them? Did no, you? No, no, okay. they, That's done in-house. Okay. You know, you know, uh, uh, I always felt to some degree that, uh, you know, uh, as chief, we have people that we appoint, it's confirmed by the National Council, we should allow them to do their work, and if there's issues concerning that, that's when I intervene. But, uh, you know, and, and, and looking back, uh, really, and what was going on with health, there's too many positive and successful stories that were, were going on instead of uh, any negativity. You're gonna always hear, you know, well, I, I waited six hours at the emergency room. Uh, not too long ago, I went to the emergency room at St. Francis with one of my grandkids. We sat there six hours, and I was kind of smiling, thinking, "It's no different than what we do at the Creek Nation." Yeah. You know, one of the things I'm really proud of in our health is that we're we uh, on the MRI unit that was built at the medical center in Okmulgee. We did that because we were having to uh, resource that 
out and we're paying millions of dollars. Now that money can be kept locally and recycled to maybe do some other programs with the money that's, that we're, we're, we're making off of it. Yeah. A lot of things as principal chief, there's a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to answer to and there's a lot of information to gather. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like at any time in your four years that you were cheated of some of that because you didn't know or, or something slipped through the cracks? I mean, because as principal chief, you're submitting budgets to the council for this nation that have, you know, supposedly or according to documents that has had us in the red on some things. Mm -hmm. So does that make you go back and regret the fact that there wasn't something told to you or anything well, you like know, that? Well, you know, I saw it was 2020. Sure. Uh, in every cabinet meeting I had, one of the things I always started out with is we're here to work for the citizens that we serve. Mm -hmm. Any, any uh, things that you do, you make a decision on it. But in the long run, I'm the one that's going to have to answer for it. Mm -hmm. So I need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was cheated out of some information, uh, you know, you see that every day in everyday life uh, with any leader. Mm -hmm. uh, who's to say that the the Speaker of our National Council may not have been given some, some information that he might feel cheated out of. You know, it's, it's a process. This world is not perfect by any means. Uh, and that's what I shared with my, my uh, cabinet. None of us are perfect. This nation is not perfect. But one of our goals is we're going to strive for perfection. And I feel like that's one of the things that we I took a lot of pride in. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, because of uh, of people uh, being misinformed about uh, some of the projects that you asked me about earlier, mm -hmm. uh, automatically people were thinking that we were in the red on everything, and, and we weren't, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in the previous uh, administrations, going all the way back to Claude Cox, who I worked for, you know, there appears a time when there were things that uh, we operated or we were part of that were in the red. Uh, you know, so it's nothing new, and I'm not using that as an, as an excuse. Yeah. Well, my um, opportunity today to visit with you is to let the people know is we have a new chief. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to get behind him mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, it's a learning process for him. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a learning process for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. It's a learning process for the people that he's appointing. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of pointing fingers at him, you know, I haven't done it. All I'm saying is that there's some issues that I was told that, that didn't happen, and I'm trying to clarify some of those things by this interview. Is there anything else, uh, Chief, that you'd like to add before we let you go? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, um, uh, you're always going to have detractors, the naysayers, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that Chief Floyd is probably already hearing that himself. Uh, you have to be awful broad-shouldered mm -hmm. to be a chief or even any elected official uh, within the Muscogee Creek Nation. Now, I don't think people really understand when we say we're the fourth largest nation in the country, Indian country. Uh, there's a lot of things that go on. We're not going to catch everything, you know. And those that think that we can, uh, they're dreaming. Uh, I think that uh, regardless of what we do, even in, in what you do in, in the media, you know, we say and we uh, do to represent the people we serve. There's going to be times that nobody's a uh, number of people is not going to agree with what you put on TV or what you do. You know, it's Don't just it's just life. You know, it's it's just life. I mean, you know, but instead of uh, you know whining about it and instead of uh, you know questioning about decisions, you have to go on. You have to go on. You know, the Muscogee Creek people back in November made a decision. I'm okay with it. You know, actually, uh, I think God does things sometimes to kind of wake you up and and take you in another direction. And I see that with my life, you know. Uh, my wife is well. Uh, she's back at work. Uh, you know, the, the last year and a half has been tough on our household. But we've overcome it. And just as I said earlier, the Muscogee Creek people, they'll, they'll rally around one another and we'll overcome this too. Thank you, sir, for the time. Thank you.